Welcome everyone, I'm Sam Kokoulis. And I'm Mike Smith. We hope you all had a fantastic summer. We have a lot in store for you this season, new set, new graphics. Even some new staff members. It's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be awesome, let's jump right into it. Number 88 on a middle school football team in Texas is not your average player. 12 year old Trey Sampson has cancer and doctors say it's taking over his body. Trey lost his arm due to the disease and it has unfortunately spread to his lungs, but that's not stopping the young man from doing what he wants and he wanted to score a touchdown. Come on, Jermaine, there we go, baby. Go, baby, baby, all right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after his outstanding touchdown that day, the Jaguars went on to win the game. Trey was not only surrounded by his team, but by his opponents as well. On average, we have 28,835 days in our lifetime. Executive Vice President of Video at BuzzFeed, Z Frank, has created a visual representation of how we spend our days in jelly beans. Here's a single bean. It's your very first day. We will be asleep for a total of 8,477 days. After we remove all those beans, this is what remains. This is the time that we have left. What if you just had one more day? What are you going to do today? What would you do with just one more day? Let us know on Twitter at The Outlier ASU and Facebook The Outlier ASU. They say you don't need a mask to be a hero, but it sure helped these two men. When someone's house was on fire, two men who I will not name to protect their identity were in the right place at the right time. They leaped into action. Ironically enough, they were already dressed in full superhero garb as part of their job, teaching positive lessons to children. They kicked at a window to let out smoke. Thankfully, the couple that lives at the home was not there at the time, but their cat was. With a little resuscitation, the cat is doing all right. Everyone, for that matter, made it out okay. Side note, the man dressed as Batman is no amateur. He's a former firefighter, even helping out while stationed in Iraq with the military. A robbery victim, Seth Froome, has created a new iPhone case that, is not, that not only protects your phone, it protects you as well. The yellow jacket has a creative feature, a built-in stun gun. The case can shoot 650 kilovolts of electricity into your assailant's body, which is equivalent to, the, to a full-size stun gun. The case is sold for $125 and is available in multiple colors. As a bonus, it includes an external battery for your phone. People in Pennsylvania are getting their pants scared off, literally. A new haunted house attraction, Naked and Scared, challenges those 18 and older to go through the haunted house naked or prude in which they can wear their underwear, believing participants can reach a different level of fear as they are at their most vulnerable stage. Lawyers in that area avidly await the multiple lawsuits due to arise. Guests with disabilities will no longer be able to skip to the front of the line at Disney. As of October 9th, disabled patrons will now receive tickets with a return time that guarantees a shorter wait, much like the current FastPass system. Though families with children with disabilities are unhappy with the change, Disney believes they need to move forward with the new system. We welcome back Mariah Hurst with your PDQ this week. California Governor Jerry Brown passed a law that requires websites to let people under the age of 18 remove their postings. This eraser button is meant to protect teens from bullying, embarrassment, and harm to a future job or college application. The National Lawyers Guild is filing a petition against the U.S. government in a case with Puerto Ricans living on an island that was once used as a bombing range. On Tuesday, one lawyer said that families still suffer serious health conditions from living in a, in a toxic environment. The ex-president of Trader Joe's is opening a new store with expired food. His project is called The Daily Table. The hybrid store and restaurant was inspired by the 2012 report that said, due to misleading labels, consumers waste 40% of the food that is perfectly good to eat. Three new oil spills were reported Tuesday at a Colorado oil patch that was damaged by flooding. These are just three of the 11 notable spills at this location. At least 34,000 gallons of crude oil have been spilled. After accusations of racial discrimination, Abercrombie and Fitch stores are modifying their look policies. The update will acknowledge headscarves as acceptable in the workplace and accept other requests for uniform exceptions. That's a look at some other news. Sam, back to you. Crayola has introduced a new program called Color Cycle that may become the fuel of the future. Old Crayola markers can be turned into clean energy to be used for cars, ships, and heating purposes. One package of markers makes enough fuel to cook an egg or brew a pot of coffee. 
Currently, 17,000 markers have been successfully recycled through the process in about 600 schools around the country. I'm pretty sure I have a basement full of dried up markers that could totally fill up my gas tank. Devin, tell us what's trending this week. Thanks, Sam. Miley Cyrus was featured in Rolling Stone magazine this week about her sudden turn and attitude. She wasn't afraid to sprinkle in a few swears to prove her maturity, but got real with us when she admitted that her, the tear in her latest video, Wrecking Ball, was dedicated to her dog, who just passed away. Grand Theft Auto V was released last week, but many on the internet are focusing in on Amanda Lestar's vine she uploaded to put her, video, her brother's video gaming to an end. Check it out. How to piss off my brother. The video has over 41,000 comments, and the top ones are stating how crazy this girl is. A video featuring Matthew Jen Carella proposing to his girlfriend Bryn while they were wakeboarding together has been a gaining views. And now for your sports news, we have Patrick, Nick, and Tyler. Welcome into this week's edition of Outlier Sports. I'm Nick Wixman, alongside me, Patrick Wagner, Tyler Sudarth. The NCAA has decided to restore Penn State scholarships that were taken away during the Jerry Sandusky scandal at a gradual rate starting next season through the 2017-2018 football season. Now, the NCAA's original sanction was to take away a large number of Penn State scholarships through the 2016-2017 season. Patrick, what do you think about the move? I think this is a great move for both Penn State and, and the NCAA. You know, Jerry Sandusky's in jail. Joe Paterno is no longer with the program. The athletic director is no longer with them. I think this is a good move to really start helping Penn State become a competitive program in the Big Ten once again. Patrick, you know, I have to agree with you, but Tyler, I hear you got other thoughts. It doesn't matter that Penn State has new coaches or new players. What matters is that they broke the rules and they deserve to be punished for it. In 2010, USC, they broke the rules, and as a consequence, they were harshly punished for it. In 1987, before I was even born, SMU football broke the rules, and they were harshly punished for it. Penn State broke the rules. Why are they not harshly punished for it? Tyler, you know, that's a great point. All right, gentlemen, now to the NHL, where the puck drops on the season Tuesday night when the reigning Stanley Cup champion Chicago Blackhawks take on the Washington Capitals. Guys, let's hear your projections for this season's Stanley Cup's finals. Tyler, let's start with you. Yes, Nick, hockey is back, and it is better than ever. For my Stanley Cup predictions, I like the Pittsburgh Penguins and the St. Louis Blues. I like the Pittsburgh Penguins because of Sidney Crosby. Not only that, but the Pittsburgh Penguins were able to build a nice team around Sidney Crosby, so they're going to be competitive this year. But I think they face a strong opposition this year when they face the St. Louis Blues. That's right, guys, the St. Louis Blues. I like what they're doing over there in St. Louis. They got a team where they already have been competitive for the last couple years. All they did was add competitive players and more veterans to their team. They have coaches that preach defense, and defense wins championships. All right, Tyler, I do like the Penguins this year. Patrick, let's hear what you got to say. You know, I really like the New York Rangers and the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks are going to win it all because their players are better. Jonathan Taze, Patrick Kane, that's all I've got to say. They're the best team in hockey. All right, Patrick, I really hope you're right on that one. Good points all around, but that's going to wrap it up for this week's, ed this week's edition of Outlier Sports. Before we go, we want to wish a happy retirement to Major League Baseball Commissioner Bud Selig, who announced Thursday that he will retire at the end of his appointment, January 2015. With a look at news around the world, we turn to Kelsey Tardio with international news. The Great Firewall of China, banning foreign sites such as Facebook and Twitter since 2001, will be lifted, albeit partially. The lift is part of China's new Shanghai Free Trade Zone, an initiative meant to open up commerce to foreign businesses. Outside the zone, politically sensitive websites will still be banned. A ring that once belonged to Jane Austen will stay in England. After Kelly Clarkson bought the ring for over $230,000, the United Kingdom put an export ban on it while the Jane Austen's House Museum raised funds to buy it back. One anonymous donor to the museum pledged 100,000 pounds to help buy the ring back. It will be on display next year. On the topic of extraordinary Brits, a 28-year-old adventurer completed a solo row from Japan to Alaska by herself. Sarah Outen left Japan on April 27th. The excursion took 150 days and spanned over 3,700 miles of open ocean. Outen plans to bike across North America before trying another solo row across the Atlantic. That's what's going on around the world. Back to you. We introduce Kyle Souza with the world of politics. 
As you may recall, earlier this summer, highly classified surveillance documents were leaked by the now infamous National Security Agency contractor Edward Snowden. These leaks contained information that outlined a widespread spying operation conducted by the NSA, including a collection of telephone records from millions of American citizens. For many of you watching, this may sound oddly similar to your favorite back-to-school party anthem. Artist Two Chains weighed in on the state of personal privacy in America during a recent interview with Alex Wagner of MSNBC. When asked about the basis of his hit new single, Feds Watchin', the former Play a Circle rapper said this. Since, this is our like right. 12 years since the towers, um, we, you know, um, since that tragedy happened, so it's not a secret uh, what our country is doing to try to, you know, keep us safe. And, you know, some people think it's being nosy at the same time. But for me, I just try to educate people in an entertaining way without boring them. Oddly enough, that is exactly what I am here to do as well. So thank you, 2 Chains. Thank you for inspiring a generation of young, politically inclined individuals who are keeping it fresh as hell while the feds are watching. People are stretching it to the limit to take one class in downtown Phoenix. Katie Beary shows us how it's working more than their minds. For years, research has proven how beneficial yoga is to the mind and the body. But what is it about yoga that keeps yogis coming back week after week? Inside the AE England building, bright and early on a Saturday morning, you'll find these people. Devoted yoga students breathing, stretching, Length to the spine. and balancing before most of us have had our morning breakfast. For ASU criminology and justice students, Kara Henela and Erin O'Neill, yoga helps decrease stress and promote a calm mindset when dealing with college. Like I was saying, I get so like, wrapped up into school and stressed and thinking about all the things I have to do, and then you come here and it's an hour and a half of focusing on yourself and calming down and kind of not letting any of that get to you. It's transferred to my PhD work, it's transferred to my ability to um, just deal with problems in general. You want to open it up. Instructor Tim Cothran encourages beginners to attend any one of downtown Phoenix's classes to begin a healthier lifestyle. You can always advance, there's always development. Give it a try and, and see where it takes you. One thing's for sure, after Cawthorne's class is over, his students won't be looking forward to next Friday night. They'll be counting the hours until Saturday morning. Katie Beery, The Outlier. We live in a world of oversharing information on social media, and now we have come to overuse the dreaded hashtag. Jimmy Fallon and JT poke fun at it this week. Hashtag speaking of smiling, I just saw my dentist. Hashtag bling. Hashtag dental care. Hashtag cavity free. Hashtag that's how we do. Hashtag we go hard. Hashtag and we can't stop. Hashtag we won't stop. Hashtag we run this. Hashtag true players for life. Hashtag is it worth it or let me work it. Hashtag put my thing down, flip it, then reverse it. Hashtag is your women in the gang yet? Hashtag is your women in the gang yet? Hey guys. Yeah, Quest? What's up? Hashtag shut the up. Thanks again for tuning into our new season. We have a lot in store for you. Hashtag New Year. <laughs> and don't forget, hashtag why be normal when you could be an outlier? <laughs>